build it, you demolish it. The legendary Home Wrecker Burrito. Come build yours today with 20 plus fresh ingredients. First online order, 10% off. Promo code online. Another Monday night here at the most Cameron Village in Raleigh. Welcome back here to this episode of Over the Boards here. Zach Sawai here for Pack TV alongside the head coach of the 2019 ACCHL champion, NC State Ice Pack coach. That's got a great wing to it. Yeah, I like it. I like it too, Coach. But of course, this episode is always sponsored by Most Cameron Village in Raleigh. You can go ahead and give them a call at 919-999-3999 or go ahead and go online at 919.catering.mos.com. As always, Coach, that's a lot of nines. It is. It is. Heading into this one, Coach, I have to admit the second half of the season was riveting. Had me on the edge of my seat the entire time up there in the press booth. What did you like about the second half of that season there? Uh, you know, I think um, just the focus and determination that the guys had. You know, uh, we had a really good first half. Uh, and then you get that six-week break, you know, so it's easy to kind of, you know, let your guard down a little bit, maybe not stay in shape, and, and, but the guys obviously showed that uh, it meant a lot to them, and uh, they came in ready to play, and, uh, yeah, we had a good, good half, second half. I think the good second half course was sparked by this resiliency of this team, and it's something that we were talking about a little bit on the broadcast as well. The fact that you guys have four lines that you're continuously recycling, the resiliency, resiliency rather, of those four lines to keep on stepping up, making those big plays. What did you like about having 12 guys that you felt comfortable putting on the ice at any time? I mean, it makes it a lot easier for me. Um, you know, rolling four lines is always good. Get everybody involved in the game. Um, and it, it gives the, the first and second line guys, you know, an opportunity for a break. And, you know, some of the teams we played were rolling too. Or, you know, maybe, you know, spotting in a third line and it, it just wears the guys down. So um, the ability to use those guys as much as I could was important to me. And uh, I think we did the, the best we could with it. And I think another issue, too, that I want to bring up, though, is the growth of hockey in North Carolina. Your guys' depth is incredible compared to the rest of the ACC. Your hockey team is one of the more publicized teams in North Carolina right now compared to Duke, who has had historically roster issues. How does it feel to be among the spotlight of those top ACC teams where when people think of hockey in North Carolina, college hockey at least, they think of you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great for the program, and it's great for the school, and it's great for the ACC, and you know, hockey, uh, college hockey is cyclical. You know, you're, you're going to lose guys. You're going to pick guys up. Guys go study abroad. You know, so a lot of things, you know, kind of a, a lot of moving parts in, uh, in, in the course of a, you know, a season or, you know, a couple of seasons. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's real good, and I, I think the guys feed off of that, and uh, I'm happy for them. And I think the two guys that really fed off that the most was Joey Hall and Josh Cannon. Throughout most of the entire year this year, they have been the two stellar goaltenders that you have had for the majority of this year. But going more into that, what have you liked about their play, being able to use them both, sometimes in back-to-back -back scenarios, and split them evenly throughout the year? I mean, it, it's a problem. Uh, but it's a good problem to have, right? Because, uh, you know, we know we can go with either one. We're comfortable with either one. Uh, you know, we want to get them both involved. And, yeah, we, we wanted to try to get Ian and Jess involved in it too, you know? Um, so I think Alex did a real good job. He made all the decisions about, you know, who was going to play. And, um, you know, he, yeah, he would run it by me. But, I, you know, I'm not going to micromanage him. And he works with the goalies and he talks to the goalies. And, so I think he did a real good job with, uh, with balancing that out. And, um, you know, the guys get along real well off the ice as well as on. And um, I think they push each other to get a little bit better, which is important, especially going into the playoffs. No one, I don't think, felt everything was on their shoulders or at the same, that you know, that they had the whole thing. I, I think they felt they had to play well to earn the spot in the next game. And, uh, you know, it was healthy competition. I think the one thing that I wanted to point out, though, about Joey Hall, just to touch on before we go here, he was telling the technician at the NC State newspaper just looking at himself, his reflection in that trophy was the moment that he realized that he actually won it after the game ended, that he didn't know that he won it. But that's a mark to his work ethic, I think. What did you think about his work ethic through enti his entire four years here at NC State going into the graduation coming up this year? Uh, well, the first year... The first year we had Calvin, who had gotten hurt, right? Mm -hmm. So Joey was kind of like thrown into the spotlight, so to speak. Um, but I think o over the course of the time, I think he 
each season he came in a little uh, came into like tryouts um, a little more focused on what he was doing. Um, we saw, you know, he has a, a little flair for the dramatic at times with some of his saves. And, um, you know, he was playing to the crowd at times. And, you know, he, he realized he needed to dial that in a bit. And he did. And he did a very good job of it. And um, it made him a, a better player. And it has been outstanding to watch his development this year as well. Absolutely doing an incredible job in the ACC tournament, which we'll be talking about in just a little bit. But to backtrack into the earlier, the latter half of the second half of this season, we're going to start off talking about ECU here, a game in which you guys haven't faced ECU in quite some time. They came in. I talked to their head coach, very nice man, talking about the growth of hockey in North Carolina. He was actually one of the head coaches of the ECU Junior Pirates heading into this one as well. So to talk about that game against ECU, that was it seemed like a while ago at this point, but I think that was the beginning of when you guys started to make that playoff trek. Um, yeah, we hadn't played them in a while, and there was a lot of like uncertainty as far as how that game was going to go. And um, uh, you know, it was it was big because we had a, a lot of people at that game. If you remember, um, in fact, uh, they they kind of stopped people from coming in because it just yep. got to be too many. Um, so, and we knew it was going to be, we know they have a, a good, you know, basically a, a pirate population here in Raleigh, right? And so, um, it, you know, that was good. The guys were dialed in for it, and uh, they went out and they played well. And, you know, anytime you play somebody who you never really saw before, um, there's always a little hesitation as to what they're going to have and, you know, how we're going to, uh, you know, address their game. But the, the guys did a great job with it, and uh, I think it sparked them. I don't think hesitancy played into a big role as well, considering that, Several other guys in that night stepped up and scored in that one. Ian O'Rourke potted one of his first goals in that game as well. Talk about the performance of some of those underlying guys this season and especially in that game against the Pirates. Well, you know, you, you need you need to get scoring from all four lines and, and your defense, right? If you're going to be successful, you can't rely on one goal or, or you know, one, one group of guys or, or, you know, just constantly relying on Sam for the scoring, you know? Mm -hmm. We need to spread it around. It makes us more dangerous, right? And it right. makes us harder to defend. And, um, you know, the, the guys are working hard and... Um, you know, anytime again you can get you can get your your depth guys going and scoring, it, it's definitely a positive for us. And all those positives you took from that game were absolutely incredible positives. Like in a calculus math class, you needed all those positives heading in to the backyard brawl, which is one of the big biggest highlights of the second half of the season so far. Considering it was one of the largest attended games in the history of the backyard brawl history, there. Yeah, that. Um I don't know exactly who had the idea of moving it from a, a Monday to a Wednesday, but they they tend to feel that it would give us a, a better crowd, and certainly it did. Um, that, you know, and again, you know, the guys came out, and you never want to discount UNC just for the simple reason of the rivalry. And uh, the guys came out, and credit to them, they played well. And absolutely as well. You look at guys like Nikita and Estrada, Matt Costigan, guys that are getting those goals consistently in that game as well. They really had a strong effort throughout the entire game. There was not one lapse. What did you like coming in? Slow? It's been a long season. You guys are getting yourselves tired out. There's no way you can go home and crash in bed after this. You guys got to keep on going throughout these games. And coming into the backyard brawl, how good was it to see that these guys, after a fatigued earlier second half of the season, coming into this one, they were able to keep up that energy? Well, again, I think it's a testament to the guys and, you know, what we, we set out, uh, our, set our goals out to be at the beginning of the year, which was, you know, uh, look, you go into every game and you want to win, right? Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to come in first in the ACC, we wanted to come in first in our division, and we wanted to win the championship, right? And every game got us one step closer to that, right? So, you know, the guys start feeling the importance of the next game and the next game, and, uh, you know, it's... It just makes them work harder. And after the backyard brawl, of course, which was done in outstanding fashion, winning that one five to nothing, you guys ventured into a game against the Charlotte 49ers in a very hostile territory, as you know. That was a fundraiser night for their fraternity and sorority Greek life there. And heading into that one, and for any Ice Pack fans who ended up watching that in the Charlotte live stream, there was some instances of where you guys looked a little bit slow, a little bit sloppy at times, and that had to be a little bit concerning against a top caliber reigning, at the time, reigning ACC champions. What did you think of of your team play in that game. It, from my vantage point, at least, it looked a little bit on the lesser quality. Well, if you remember, we got off the the, uh, the second shift was uh, Robinson and, and Riley and, and Parker, and they got two goals. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe some guys 
felt that they could take a little bit of, they had a little bit of a breather, you know, a little bit extra space. Uh, you know, and th there was some points, uh, listen, when you play as many games as we play and, and you play some of the teams we play, there's, mm -hmm. there's going to be some lulls in the action, right? right I right. mean, it's going to happen. So, you know, the idea is to go in and address it and, uh, you know, correct it. And, um, you know, they were able to do that. And, you know, anytime you have that situation, as, as long as, as long as they can see it, and make adjustments that they need to make, we're going to be okay. And Charlotte always has been a hostile team to play against. I know for a fact that I've always have talked to Sam and everybody like that. You guys have hated playing against Charlotte, barely squeaking, squeaking by a win earlier last semester, 7-5 to five in that one. Your track record against Charlotte, while they have been hard to play against, has been very good. Yeah, but they're always a good team, and they always play as tough because of the, you know, the, the rivalry that we have with them. And uh, I think it's gotten uh, a little more intense in the past, say, two or three seasons um, there with, with the fans and stuff like that. But, you know, that's another thing the guys got to learn to do is you got to learn to block all that out and just deal with what's going on on the ice. And we talked about that a little bit before the game, and I think they did a real good job of that. And, you know, we, we weren't hurt too much by the fact that the uh, – the Charlotte Rush played before us, and that game uh, probably caused our game to go on about an hour later. So I think maybe their attendance was a little diminished, right. which, uh, you know, again, didn't really hurt us. Um, you know, and then if we got up on them, I, I think like the third or fourth goal, you know, it, it started it then out a bit. Now, is that going to be the case next year when we play them? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it... Um, it shows the importance of a good start. And before we head to break here really quick, I wanted to get just some final thoughts on the regular season from your guys as well. It has been a wild ride from start to finish, 25-0, and 0, undefeated. Your personal best season since the 15-16 season. What have you liked about this year, just all in all? I mean, just the guys as a whole, uh, the leadership, you know, mm -hmm. um, Sam, Ryan Kinney, um, Ian O'Rourke, uh, Ellis, now, even Cam stepped into a good leadership role this year, I thought, um, keeping the guys focused on, on you know, the goal. Um, the camaraderie in the locker room, you know, the way they, they talk to each other and treat each other and, um, you know, want to play for each other was just, it was, honestly, it was, it was great to see. And honestly, as well, heading into those practices, every single night before practice, these guys meet up sometimes an hour before practice to hang out just to talk and bouncing off that camaraderie, that friendship that you guys have, you know, being able to just do whatever they do to need to prepare those rituals, everything like that. How exciting is that for yourself to know, to be able to see that your guys are getting so, getting along so well just beyond that team level? Yeah, you know, whatever, whatever they had going on in the locker room and stuff, uh, that was their time. Like, I didn't get involved in any of that. Um, but it's good because now I think with so many new guys, we had like 11 new guys this year. Mm -hmm. Um, now that's kind of the norm to them. And so my hope is that, um, wh whatever the, the returning players did to bring that along the, uh, the new guys as they, you know, get older and, and, you know, get their years on in, at state hockey, will take the newer guys and, and bring that same, uh, energy to us. And uh, just it'll make us a stronger team. And it's going to be exciting to talk about that as well. We're going to talk about the six graduating seniors from this NC State Ice Pack class coming up after break. We'll be right back and we'll talk a little bit more about the tournament and heading into regionals against Ryder right here. Build it, you demolish it. The legendary Home Wrecker Burrito. Come build yours today with 20 plus fresh ingredients. First online order, 10% off. Promo code online. And we're back here at Most Camera Village in Raleigh. Zach Sawai here for Pack TV alongside the man behind the mustache, head coach Mike Cazillo. Coach, Valentine's Day has passed and I'm just, I'm still not feeling the love. Yep, that's good. Okay, thank you very much. But going heading into the tournament, Coach, it has been an outstanding record to see you guys walking in 22-0 and heading into the ACC tournament, but that's got to bring a lot of nerves to your team. Um, I, I don't necessarily think I saw it mm -hmm. uh, in them, but I'm sure it was there. I kind of actually hope it was there a little <laughs> bit. Um, going into uh, that weekend... 
Um, I, I asked Steve Halco, who's Devin Halco's dad, who mm -hmm. played for the Canes, also yep. played on the uh, national championship Michigan team, um, to come in and talk to the guys because, you know, he knows what it's like to go into those tournaments and, you know, the emotion and stuff like that and how you got to, you know, prepare yourself and what it takes to win. And he talked to them for a while. And um, I think maybe that might have settled a few guys down. I know they were excited to hear from him. Um, but, you know, wh whatever whatever emotions they were feeling, they certainly kept them in check. And, again, credit to them. And also, as well, you guys are heading in 22-0, of course, getting ready to pop those champagne bottles on an amazing 22-0 undefeated season by heading into this tournament. The nerves had to be there as well. But also, it was a little bit different heading into this one because you guys were the spotlight for most of the ACHA, at least the Southeast region. You were among one of the only undefeated teams. So the spotlight was almost on you guys heading into this one. Finished off as the number eight seed there, right behind Delaware and Ryder, who comes in as the sixth seed as well. So how could you guys, like knowing that you guys are in the spotlight, brushing that aside and still being able to play your game on a nightly basis? I mean, you know, the only thing I can really tell the guys is, you know, it, it gets harder, mm -hmm. you know, because you you want to, you know, keep that streak alive. Um, you know, they just, you know, we basically asked them to make a commitment to themselves and each other um, and what they were going to do and what they were going to bring. And, you know, I said, well, you know, we, everybody got up and did that. And, you know, a man's as good as his word, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. go out, keep your word, and, you know, work, play for yourself, play for your teammates, those that were fortunate enough to have family and friends, um, you know, play for your school, uh, you know, leave it all out there. Yeah, obviously, Coach, and you were supposed to keep your word about getting me a Christmas present, but that didn't happen, so nope. too bad about that. But coming out of nowhere, going into that St. Joe's game, the very first one where you guys ended up winning 11-1, to Eric Mura came out of absolutely nowhere in that game, potting two goals, and he has only really scored goals in tournament games dating back to last year. He bodied one in in the Wake Forest semifinal game, the rematch coming into that one. So what did you like about Eric's play? Because he was named tournament MVP. Yeah, I was really happy for, for him for that. Uh, Eric doesn't really say much. You know, he does contribute uh, substantially to the team, you know, so maybe not in goals, but, you know, he takes the body where it needs to be. He's not afraid to get dirty. Um, he'll block shots, as he did numerous times in that tournament. You know, he brought a lot of leadership, you know, having gone through four years in the ACHA uh, mm -hmm. and the ACC. Um, you know, coming here as a grad school student, a little more maturity. And um, I think he, he, again, quiet leader, but he really stepped up his role and, you know, the guys fed off it. I'm very happy for him. And obviously this is a team with a lot of young blood, but heading into this game, one thing that I particularly liked about what you said was this aspect of maturity. And heading into this one, your offense was relatively new, a lot of freshmen coming into this one, but your offense seems so mature, and they put on an offensive clinic, winning that game 11-1, to Riley Johnson getting a hat-trick in that game. I mean, you massacred St. Joe's there. How were you guys able to just keep up that pressure throughout the game and maintain that motivation through the rest of the tournament? I mean, it, it's simple. You, you know that... You know that if you want to play on Sunday, you got to win Friday and you got to win Saturday, right? And you know that you have to build the momentum, you have to build the work ethic that you're not going to take any shifts off because mm -hmm. the games are going to get harder, and they did. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just kind of drilling that into their heads and, and you know, them taking it and, and embracing it and going out and playing that way. Um, was basically the secret to it. And it absolutely did get harder heading into that ACCHL semifinal rematch there against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. You were down one to nothing early, but then you scored three unanswered goals to propel yourself to that victory. The resiliency factor came up again in that one. Yeah, I mean, we, we, going into the last game of the season was against Wake Forest, right? Mm -hmm. So we beat them 10 nothing in our place. And, you know, we all knew that that wasn't a team that you were going to go in and beat 10 nothing, right? So right. Um, playing them the week before, um, playing in that building was, was big. Um, the guys went out and, you know, they just, again, it comes down to who wants it sometimes, and they proved that they wanted it. And I have a note here as well bouncing off of that. I noticed from the way that this team played that the quit in your guys' team was undeniable. You guys had no energy to stop going. You just kept on pushing through. And that's, I think, one of the best things about why you guys separated yourself as the number one seed in the ACC over teams like Georgetown and UVA. There was very few games this year where you guys had lapses in your game. And if anything, they were just very minute things. But still going into that, the consistency throughout the year really made me feel like your resiliency stood on top above all things. Yeah, that and again, it gets back to what we talked about earlier 
earlier about have being able to roll four lines, right? And mm -hmm. giving those guys a break and, you know, keeping some shifts short so you can go out. You can have an energy shift, get off and let the next group go out. And, uh, you know, it, it pays dividends because, you know, like I told them at the beginning, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon this mm -hmm. weekend. So, um, you know, get, get, keep, keep your energy now because we're going to need it as we go. And I thought in particular Josh had a very good game that against Wake Forest there. Really stood on his head in that game. What do you like from his technically sound play? Yeah, he was outstanding in that game. There's no question. I mean, he robbed Wake early on on a, a few uh, really terrific saves, and it energizes the guys. And, you know, you hear them say, and he's playing for us, let's play for him. And, um, you know, they just went out and just, you know, as long as the goalies are doing their job, which clearly they did, um, the, it energizes the guys, and they just want to go out and work harder. And heading into a game against strong goaltenders like David Voigt in the championship game there against the University of Virginia, the Cavaliers there, they're a hard team to play against, and you have not historically done well against them. Last season, in the 2017-2018 season, you guys lost twice to them. It was not an easy route heading into this one, but nonetheless, you guys pulled through and won your second title since 2011. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They are not easy. Uh, several years ago, that was one of the games you would look at and say, all right, now we've got a pretty good chance at that one. <laughs> and, and, I mean, that's just the truth. Um, but now in recent years, they've really, I mean, Colin, their coach, has done a great job with them. And uh, they got a good bunch of guys and uh, got some good leadership. And, they, yeah, they are difficult to play against. And, uh, you know, but, again, you know, it comes down to who wants it more and, and look that like we did. And absolutely, just bouncing off of that, it was the second title you guys have had since 2011, like we touched on there. And I know this team has, it's very new, so they're just focused on winning. And I've talked about this a few times with some of the guys, talked about this with Riley Johnson in our ACCHL tournament preview show. You can still catch that on Pack TV to catch up all of our predictions, just to note we were all right about who won. So points to me, thank you very much. But heading into that as well, the quit in this team is undeniable. And more than that, you guys is winning. The mentality there is about winning and the work path that you guys have had, the rookies didn't really think about the long history, the long route that it took to get here. So how did it feel for those veterans to win versus how did it feel for those new guys to win? You know, I think, I think for some of the veterans, they, you know, they felt it was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. um, for the newer guys, they get to see that, you know, um, this is what hard work is going to get you, you know, you're, you're going to get results. And, um, you know, again, good leadership and, and, and a good, I mean, just a good group of guys that just gelled and, you know, wanted to play for each other and wanted to win and just went out and did it. And obviously we talk about Sam Banaszewicz there so much. And as you can see on the screen right now, there he is hoisting the cup. What does his importance mean to this program? And we talk about it so much, but I think it just goes beyond surface level of words. Yeah, I mean, I really can't put it into words. He's been, I mean, literally, I mean, he, he's been the heart and soul of this team since, you know, he got here. Um, he was a captain early on. Um, he told me he had never been a captain of a team before, and I am just literally was shocked by that. You know, I mean, on and off the ice, he's just, um, he's just a class guy, got a great family. Um, he just, he loves uh, NC State hockey. And um, yeah, we are, we are gonna miss him, you know, beyond words. Well, I'll give him a few of my classes so he can stay another couple of years if that works out for you guys. <laughs> yeah, all right, well. Yeah, it'll save my GPA, hopefully, if he, if he does well in that. But going off of that, your other graduating seniors, like Joey Hall, like Tyler Alfonzetti, Eric Mira, Davis Hudson, Ellis Rushford, and those six guys right there, those are particular some of the guys that have really stood out to me, at least the most throughout the course of this year in terms of consistency. Tyler Alfonzetti, of course, with the clutch winner against the University of Delaware, the Blue Hens there. Eric Muir doing a fantastic job alongside Davis Hudson and Alice Rushford stepping up when his team needs him. And I know we don't have a lot of words to say on this show about all of your amazing players, but in particular, I think Alice is somebody that we need to talk about a little bit more here. You know, Ellis is, uh, he's a Marine, and he uh, did some tours overseas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Tim actually referenced, you know, a lot, a lot of guys know what it's like to really be in trenches. Uh, he's one, you know, and so his leadership and the way, he, you know, he kind of conducted himself. I mean, I remember the one game that I think it was against Wake Forest when, um, you know, he, he took like a punch square to the face and didn't retaliate, you know. And kept his composure, and what happens? We get a power play, we go out and score, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, 
he he is just he is a true leader and the guys love him and all those guys are just you know they're just great guys this is going to be a tough uh group to to say goodbye to now in terms of these seniors heading into next year is there any current plans about inviting them back either to be you know on the coaching side of things or is there a senior or alumni honoring game that you guys are thinking about heading into next year because the scheduling has already started there for the ACCHL yeah, I'm pretty much done with the scheduling. Um, you know, we had done an alumni game in the past. Uh, couldn't put one together this year. So clearly all those guys would would be welcome uh, to come back, and we hope to see them again. You know, it, it's good to see guys, especially uh, some of the guys that were here the first year that, that I got here and came back and play. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, hopefully they uh, – you know, they're always part of the family, right? So hopefully you see or hear from them, you know, as time goes by. And somebody who I think is going to be a crucial part of the family for, for all time there is Tyler Alfonsetti. I want to bounce back to him and his importance throughout the past several years to this program. What have you liked from him, um, you know, through the course of all this time? Um, you know, think about there's a kid with a, with a just basically a 4 mm -hmm. GPA in nuclear engineering. Better than I'll ever have. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I can't even spell nuclear engineering. So the course load that he has and what it takes to get to that point um, and to not miss practice, you know what I'm saying? And to show up every game and play hard, um, it just speaks volumes. And when it came down, down to, you know, putting him up for the ACC Scholar Athlete, um, and, you know, obviously I had to do a little write-up on it, and so I just got to talking to him a little bit and, mm -hmm. You know, finding out, you know, some of the accomplishments he's had. You know, he doesn't go around and, you know, beat his own chest by any means. So I'd actually pull it out of him. Um, but some of the accomplishments and awards he's received over mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one other thing I'll quickly share with you is, you know, a couple of years back I, I had a, a woman come into the brink and she uh, asked me, are oh, you a state coach? Yeah. Um, and she said, the little Italian kid on your team is really a special person and I looked at her and I said Tyler and she said yeah and she went on to tell me how her son was failing math <laughs> and somehow they got Tyler involved in tutoring him and not only was he passing but he was loving the subject and he completely transformed this kid's approach to the way he was learning so again he never told me any of this this is something I found out on my own so I mean, look, he's a special guy, and he's got a tremendous future ahead of him, and uh, you know, I wish all of those guys nothing but the best of everything. And it's going to be exciting as well. And I hate to bring on the waterworks here, Coach, but i got to ask you just about one more guy, Eric Mira, once again. He transferred in from the University of Charlotte, now comes back here and becomes one of your guys, one of your star defensemen on this team. Just elaborate just a little bit on um, up here. And we do have tissues ready in case you know, it does <laughs> evoke emotion. <laughs> um, you know, when, when he, he approached me about, you know, possibly trying out for the, your playing last year, second, second semester, and it, we, we brought him out, and, you know, we could see right away he, he was a good player, you know. Um, putting him out there on the power play, actually, in that, in that uh, Wake Forest game in the tournament, uh, and he got a goal. Um, he, was, he was excited to come back, and again, he's just... He's pretty quiet. He doesn't really say a whole lot. You have to actually ask him for information. But, um, you know, he's an architecture student, which is pretty demanding as well. And, um, you know, he's, I know he's, he's gone out and he's done some, some traveling around with uh, that program. Mm -hmm. And he, I know he's got some job offers. And he's just, he's just an incredible, incredible guy to be around. And uh, another guy that we are doesn't have the, you know, the flair that maybe some of the other guys have, but we're definitely going to miss him. I'm going to preface this. Uh, we're talking like the season is done, but it's not. You guys still have one more game left, two more practices, and then you guys are heading up to Liberty to take on Ryder in the ACHA Southeast Division, the regional games there. That's going to be an exciting game to watch. Ryder comes in as the higher seed in that one. Several other guys have 60-plus points, and I know you got to really focus on forgetting about that amazing victory that you guys had there in the tournament, but this is, this is the new challenge at hand. What's well, got to be that mentality heading in against Ryder? I mean, just what we've been doing, you know. Uh, you know, going into the the tournament, you know, Tim said everybody going into that tournament zero zero. You know, they're what they did yesterday doesn't matter anymore, mm -hmm. and so what everyone's done, you know, since doesn't matter anymore, right? We're all going in, we're all on an even keel, and um, you know they're going to be tough. We know they're going to be tough. We ex you, you don't get to regionals and get you know soft games, 
So um, we're just going to stick with what we've been doing. It's been working, and um, guys are going to go out and play hard and. You know, we, we're looking forward to the challenge. And it's been an exciting season as well, and you'll be able to catch that game against Ryder, myself, and Logan Ward. We'll be making the trek up to Lynchburg to cover that game for all, everyone who wants to tune in on Pack TV there. So it's going to be exciting to watch, Coach. I wanted to thank you for an amazing NC State hockey season and allowing all of us here at Pack TV to continue to follow our dreams of really giving you guys the spotlight there. Well, we, I mean, clearly I can speak for the team uh, when I say we appreciate everything you do and it's good to have you guys around and, you know, it's good to have the games to go back and look at, you know, for coaching purposes and right. playing purposes and stuff. So, um, yep, thank you and look forward to continuing the relationship. Are you sure about that? Not with you, but just with Pack TV. <laughs> I, I guess that'll do it for today's episode of Over the Boards here at Most Camera Village in Raleigh. For all of us here at Pack TV, our amazing directors and producers, I'm Zach Sawai. We'll see you soon, and be sure to tune in this Saturday, March 2nd, for NC State Hockey versus Ryder right here on Pack TV.